Nation is a mix of vibrant textures, layered with Jamaicans writing stories of creativity, hard work, commitment, and support. These are also the threads that weave the fabric of government's mission. Today's 2021 review of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security will give us some insights. Also, a view of what Kingston creatives are offering and more. I'm Audrey Williams, and welcome to One More Day with your Jamaica Magazine team. We'll unfold the details after the news. What are we are you full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> They say the people them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people them free paper, up. Oh, no. Them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panther, collect you know? medal. Come on, tongue, we give them that tongue. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre why pre <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration yeah. if you don't know the app to get the updates then Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, January 14, 2022. Kingston Wharves Limited KWL has launched a 60 million US dollar investment in logistics and port infrastructural development, expected to help Jamaica reassert itself as a leader in the global maritime sector. It includes 30 million US dollars for the redevelopment of Berth 7, involving the reconstruction of 183 meters of space at Port Bustamante that will boost capacity for servicing additional vessels. KWL is also spending 25 million US dollars to expand logistics service offerings at the Ashenheim Road Warehouse Complex to provide facilities for freight handling and joint venture investment opportunities. A new mobile harbor crane was also commissioned, bringing the KWL's fleet to seven. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has welcomed the investment as a signal of confidence in the economy. Because there is a sense that we are getting our debt under control, we are getting our fiscal house in order, there is certainty, there is confidence in the economic environment of the country so you can now calculate your risk and make investments. The Prime Minister says this development project is expected to create opportunities for new, attractive, high-skill jobs and position Jamaica as the maritime and logistics center of the Americas. The projects that we are here to launch this afternoon are the latest in a continuous stream of investments that have resulted in steady progress in restoring the competitive luster of Kingston Harbour and the Jamaican port and maritime sector. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that as the country leads up to its 60th anniversary of independence, priority will be given to crafting specific and instrumental policy to deal with the ocean economy integrated with the green economy. The ocean economy refers to ocean-based economic activities together with the assets, goods and services provided by marine ecosystems. The green economy is one that results in improved human well-being and social equity while significantly reducing environmental risks and ecological scarcities. Prime Minister Holness says some of the changes recently made to his cabinet are meant to ensure the push for an ocean economy policy becomes an area of focus. We have a maritime space exclusive for our economic use that is 24 times our landmass. And in that maritime space are significant assets which we will have to use but in a wise way, in a sustainable way that will see the use of the present generation not excluding the benefit and use of future generations. The Prime Minister was addressing Wednesday's launch of three development projects totaling 60 million U.S. dollars by Kingston Wharves Limited. The island's bed capacity for COVID-19 patients is set to increase with the final of eight field hospitals to be completed this month. 
The facility which is being constructed at the Savannah Lamar Hospital will move the country's bed count for COVID-19 to 745 island-wide. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie says that with the current rise in cases, there is a consequent increase in persons being hospitalized. Certainly in terms of the general admissions to hospitals, we are seeing that there are quite a number of our hospitals, especially our larger hospitals, all our regional hospitals and our type A hospitals are at red alert in terms of over 84% capacity. She was addressing a recent press briefing. As the country grapples with record high confirmed cases during this fourth wave of infections, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton used the occasion to reinforce the need for persons to get vaccinated. We need to continue to emphasize to Jamaicans that the persons who are most affected by COVID-19, irrespective of the strain, whether it's Delta or otherwise, um, are the persons who are not vaccinated. And it is a sobering message to those who are not that you're in incre increased danger and you should make every effort to get vaccinated. In other health news, the Black River Hospital in St. Elizabeth has received a donation of nine wheelchairs, two walkers and two crutches to boost its patient care. The items valued at $400,000 were presented to the hospital recently by Howard Bailey, owner of Hardware and Plumbing Supply Limited and a native of St. Elizabeth. CEO for the hospital, Diana Brown Miller, expressed gratitude for the donation, which she said would help the facility with increased patient care demand during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And finally, Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang says by the end of March, she expects to have 750 devices in the field to process motorists through the new electronic traffic ticketing system. There are currently 100 devices in operation. During a pilot rollout of the system in Halfway Tree on Wednesday, Minister Chang said he was pleased with the results so far. I um, expect this to have a major impact on how our roadway is viewed as drivers realize they'll be held accountable. This morning we're here to see the officers working and one of the, one of the motorists was stopped for a seatbelt operation. When they went and checked, he was outstanding 530 tickets. So the system allows the officer to check immediately all aspects of possible, um, possible breach of the law and that machine. Minister Chang says there is coordination and connectivity of the electronic ticketing system to the courts, the traffic authority, tax office and police network. The full impact of the system will be felt within nine months. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says this is part of the modernization of the police force and a phasing out of the manual ticketing procedures. What this does for our officers is give them information at their fingertips. They know many things about the people who they are interacting with. And that's a key component of effective modern law enforcement information at the uh, fingertips of officers. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. We work to make communities safer by essentially looking at the structures in the community that contribute greatest to social capital building. Try to reinforce, build, and establish those structures in a way that the community can sustain their own safety and own their own peace. When we say, for instance, we're doing a zinc fence removal program, what we're really doing is improving the line of sight. If you're on the street and you can see better what is behind the fences, then as you, as you walk along the street or children play and etc., you're able to contribute to crime prevention. We believe in terms of our mandate and our responsibility that by making communities safer, we can make Jamaica safer. Last year, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security worked towards realizing its mandate of protecting the Jamaican workforce while supporting our most vulnerable. Now we unfold the finer details of these efforts and more. In 2021, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security worked to galvanize and protect the workforce while supporting society's most vulnerable. The mission was Recovering Stronger Together. The 
Prime Minister made notable contributions to the labor environment in the year. 4,781 Jamaicans took up job opportunities under the U.S. Overseas Employment Program between January and August. The money that can be earned in the United States is hard currency. And 85% of what you earn as a group across the length and breadth of North America, both Canada and the United States, returns to Jamaica. 85% of it to help your country. And in your own instances, it will help your family. This is a game changer for your lives. On November 30, the Transition to Formality Action Plan was officially launched. It will allow household helpers and fisher folk to access pension benefits under the National Insurance Scheme NIS, along with health and life insurance. 100 farmers and fisher folk will also receive capacity training to transition from micro to small and medium-sized enterprises, and 50 female household workers are to get financial and other support for entrepreneurial activities. Key policy decisions and capacity-building interventions were taken to support the ministry's mandate. The House of Representatives approved the Disabilities Regulations 2021, paving the way for the Disabilities Act and all its attendant parts to come into effect in 2022. The ministry gave the Early Stimulation Program another mobile service unit to improve its intervention services for children with special needs. Internally, a state-of-the-art elevator was commissioned into service at the ministry's St. Catherine Parish office. This is really in keeping with the vision of the leadership of the government, of the ministry, to modernize the way how we do things. In a landmark move, government launched its $800 million social pension program on July 30. The first phase of the program targets seniors 75 years and older who are not in receipt of a pension, disability benefit, or other retirement benefit or income. We are expecting that early next year we would have, through this effort, cleaned up, as it were, the path list so that we know exactly how many recipients are, are there, we know exactly how to protect project the funding necessary, and from there, we will then begin to establish even better programs that will reach out to the poor and the needy. As the pandemic continued to ravage people's incomes, the ministry distributed 11,339 food packages to vulnerable households, courtesy of a 1.06 million US dollar grant from the United Nations World Food Program. In November and December, the ministry disbursed a one-off grant of $10,000 to 360,000 Jamaicans who are beneficiaries of the Program of Advancement through Health and Education PATH and the Social Pension Program. That same month, another 10,000 poor families who are not on PATH began receiving $5,000 per month for three months. The ministry also cushioned the impact of the pandemic with an allocation of $100 million for members of parliament to provide assistance to the poorest and most vulnerable persons in their constituencies. Time cannot be spent dilly-dallying about giving assistance to the poor and the needy. And this has been our look back on some of the activities for the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, helping to mobilize the mission of recovering stronger together in 2021. with laboring on the farm but as we look into the field we're seeing more and more women wheeling the tractors planting the seeds and tilling the soil as they venture off into their own farming businesses here's Latoya Ratri a woman in agriculture Losing your job at any time is hard, more so during a pandemic. But in this adversity can arise opportunity. It's just a matter of how you bounce back from this job loss to put food on your table and to keep clothes on your back. 
late 2019 into early 2020, my, I realized that my job security was a little bit threatened. And so the thought came to me, if I were to lose my job right now, my son just started high school, what would have happened? And I explored other things, a lot of other options, you know, different ways that I could make an additional source of income. But the only thing that kept coming back to me was farming. And it's something that I just never saw myself doing. Growing up, if somebody told me that I would be doing this now, I wouldn't have believed them because I, I detest it. I didn't see where my family members, you know, really got anything out of it. It was just a little thing that they were doing. They, they didn't treat it as a business. And so I said to myself, you know, I didn't want to be like them. But at the end of the day, you know, I had to be realistic because I had a, a, a thriving backyard garden. I was saying to myself, you know, that's just being hypocritical. If you can do it just for fun, why not just do it, you know, as an additional source of income? As a farmer, the biggest challenge I had to, I have to, and still continuing to overcome, you know, are the voices in my head that, you know, farming is not a viable business. It's not something that you do. It's just something you do on the side. Um, you know, growing up, you never, nobody aspired to be a farmer. Nobody wanted you to be a farmer. You, you, you dare not go and tell your parents that, oh, I'm going to be a farmer. No, that's just not something you do. So the biggest challenge right now is, you know, the voices in my head and what, what I think society said about farming. Now, second to that, it's just to get good work. You know, they have this thing to say, good help is hard to find. Uh, we have gone through that stage where you find some that's not ideal but I have to give God thanks right now I have a team that is great natural sweet corn man you know for cook it man eat natural man see like I said it's not about losing your job but really how you bounce back we know it can be hard so make sure you are not one of those persons who are afraid to ask for help well to tell you the truth every single thing that happened in your life look at it as a lesson because whatever challenges I was facing back in 2019, 2020, in that nine to five job at the time, I, looking at it now, I saw where it prepared me to be the type of person I am today because farming is not for the faint of art, you know, it's not. And I look at it, every day I look at it, I said, I, I always repeat Romans 8, verse 28, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And if you can just look at your challenges, whatever it is you're going through right now, maybe you were fired, maybe you know your, your company scaled down, maybe you are ill, whatever it is, you can look at those challenges and just flip them, turn them into something positive. As it relates to those persons who want to go into farming, go into farming with a plan. Don't just go into farming and do it like, you know, because that's what everybody is doing. That's how my grandmother did it. That's how my, my mother is doing it right now. And I'm trying to tell her, no, you have to go with a plan. Go with a plan. Speak with the expert. Speak with Rada, you know, because you're just doing this. Even if you have a degree in the area, somebody out there still knows more than you. So speak with them and you have a plan. A, a, a chief among that plant should be your marketing plan. Who is your target audience? Why are you planting what you're planting? Once you have a plan, you don't even really need money because you can sell your plan to the financial institution, to a friend or to somebody, and they will fund it once it's a solid plan. So for those persons who have lost jobs, don't, don't give up. Just look at it as a lesson. Look at it as a stepping stone. What can I learn from this here situation right now? Most businesses started out of a crisis. This is your crisis, this is your recession. Just use it to propel you to the next level. And for those persons, young females, because I'm passionate about women empowerment, for those young women who want to go into agriculture, go straight for it. Redefining access to housing, revitalizing urban centers, restoring the environment, and reducing the impacts of climate change. 
goals set and met by the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change in 2021. Join us for a review of activities in the Ministry in the year that was right here on this station. Our next feature introduces us to some creatives who are painting the city all sorts of colors. We now change the tone with a walk into one of the capital's creative spaces. After getting your fresh produce at the Coronation Market, make your way through the busy and bustling streets of downtown Kingston to the edge of the seventh largest natural harbor in the world. What you'll find is an art haven of bright, beautiful, breathtaking murals. Welcome to the Arts Page. You're in for a visual treat. Art has the power to revive and through this, the once abandoned looking buildings in downtown Kingston now don freshly painted murals, transforming the area into an artistic hub abuzz with admirers. My mural depicts a representation of children in the inner city or from the inner city, from inner city communities that face challenging circumstances such as um, poverty, single parenting, and this shorten ability to uh, make positive decision or choices. With that, the mural also depict the, it depicts through the use of uh, bright colors and the use of playful organic shapes and lines. It depicts this sense of hope and um, possibilities for change. Uh, my mural is the big green mural uh, with the women and the mushrooms. It's really about sexual coercion and sexual harassment and how these uh, incidences, incidents can have long-lasting effects on women as they go through their lives. Uh, I, did, I kind of show that I, the idea with the mushrooms and how the mushrooms growing from them are like a parasite and how these issues uh, can affect them. Ubuntu, I am because we are. This is what I chose to depict for my new mural for Water Lane and it really just shows the contrast and complement of Jamaica and Africa. So this mural I wanted to show the difference just between I guess our mindset of how we see ourselves and who we were really called to be. So it shows your man and woman which is your king and your queen and then also a woman with the baby at her breast epitomizing just the strength of a woman and with the basket on her head um, a bucket or a basket of water. So water is life, woman being the life giver but it shows even more, you know, the great blue mountains, quote unquote, that's Jamaica, you know, the highest peak. It goes further up the giraffe, which most people know by now is my spirit animal, but it's also a gentle giant. What we're trying to do is to remove that stigma and help us to see the beauty of downtown. Downtown Kingston is very, very special. It has a lot of assets through its heritage, its history, Transforming and rebranding downtown Kingston is the mission of Kingston Creative, a non-profit arts organization. We're founded in about 2017 and we're really centered about around creative people. So our theory is that if you can empower the amount of creative people we have in Jamaica and enable them to succeed, they will then in turn employ people from their families, their communities, and together we'll get, you know, growth in our creative economy, we'll have a healthy creative ecosystem. You can take a stroll down Water Lane to fully experience, grasp, and get lost in the stories on the wall. So we've partnered with the KSAC and with the Tourism Enhancement Fund and the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. And we're developing this walkway that goes east-west. It connects our National Gallery on Orange Street and then you walk along Water Lane and it connects you back with our museums that are on East Street. So it's a natural progression. We used to just walk up and down this lane as we're going on our art walk. And then we started talking to the owners and creating these murals. And now we have about 65 new murals in downtown that we've created since 2018. Artists and other creatives can also benefit from a creative hub and other initiatives. This includes the recently concluded Catapult program 
an emergency grant for creatives. It allowed creatives to go on an artist residency for two months and they were paid 3,000 US. It allowed them to put their work online and they're paid 500 US. It really was a process of giving creatives grants so they could continue creating during the pandemic. We reached over 1,210 creatives in 26 different countries across the region with this partnership with the American Friends of Jamaica. It was our biggest grant to date. We've just signed a $1.295 million US partnership with the IDB. This is a three-year partnership to explore what happens at the intersection of creativity and technology. Kingston Creatives is also a new member of the Global Cultural Districts Network and is listed among others such as Paris, London and Dubai. Thanks to the efforts and partnership of Kingston Creatives, Downtown Kingston is well on its way to become a vibrant art district and a space for people to really enjoy a rich culture. Logic a reasonable way of thinking about or understanding anything. It remains a fundamental part of our interactions as humans, especially if we are to effectively communicate and get things done. This recognition paved the way for UNESCO to proclaim January 14 World Logic Day. Yes, that's today, so let's talk about it for a bit. The International Observance is meant to promote the development of logic in research and teaching to support the activities of associations, universities and other institutions involved with logic. The day also helps to enhance the public's understanding of logic and its effects for science, technology and innovation. The celebration of World Logic Day can also contribute to the promotion of open communication and mutual understanding based on the advancement of education and science. And logic was behind the Jamaican Vision 2030 goal of making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. <laughs> We are in a race, a race against time, to reverse the effects of climate change by one simple action which has positive and enduring effects. That's right, plant a tree, leave a lasting legacy. Join the My Tree Legacy promotion by planting a tree at your alma mater and share your work with us. Submit videos and pictures of you, your family, your friends and colleagues planting trees. Every tree counts. Plant a tree today and keep climate change away. Thanks for your attention for the last almost 30 minutes. If you missed any detail from today's show or simply want to catch up on our other features, news and programs, visit our website or our YouTube channel. Also, visit our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the GIS, I'm Audrey Williams. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.